Hmm. Hello, lurkers. And welcome back to another cozy edition of Fandom Storybook Hour. I'm your host, Lauren Stone, the owner and founder of poplurker.com. And for today's storybook adventure, we are going to take a look at Rainbow Bright. More specifically, Happy Birthday, Buddy Blue. Before we get started, give this video a big like and subscribe to Pop Lurker on YouTube so you don't miss a single one of our updates. As with most things children are fans of, there are storybooks and picture books that come out of these franchises. What was interesting about Rainbow Bright, we had the original reading card line, we had the animated Deke show, and from there we had storybooks with records and cassette tapes, little toys, and storybooks. Many of these are lost to the sands of time, but I have one. And so we're going to gather together, take a look at it, and see how it holds up. And if you think that it's strange that an old lady like me is reading a picture book, get out of my house because I'm happy. Before we get started, I think it's worth noting that Buddy Blue as a main character for this story is quite interesting to me. Buddy Blue as a character was always quite interesting to me because Rainbow Bright was one of those everybody wants me characters. Now, because these are depicted as very, very small people or very, very young children, I don't know. That's up to you, the viewer, to decide. I always thought Rainbow Bright acted like a 10, 12 year old, but clearly looks like a six, eight year old. It's a little weird. And Brian was almost 11. We learned that in the episode where he almost walked into the rainbow peril in the pits. But we have all these boys with big crushes on Rainbow Bright. We have Red Butler, Brian, and Chris, depending on his mood. Her co-star in Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer. I got my shirt from truffleshuffle.uk and you can too. I'll put a link in the description below. Pretty cool, right? But Buddy Blue did not have the same crush on Rainbow Bright. And I, as many of us wondered, although in a children's show in the 80s, this would never be discussed, it's not important, we always figured he was queer. You know, he hung out with the other girls, he was sporty like Patio Green, and you know, he was the gay best friend. Also workout clothes. I digress. Happy Birthday Buddy Blue by Lynn Calder. Copyright 1984 by Hallmark. If you could travel to the very end of the rainbow, you would find yourself in a wonderful place called Rainbowland. Lovely illustrations, very tasteful. Rainbowland is the home of Rainbow Bright, a lovable little girl who brings joy and happiness to everyone by coloring the world. A handful of star sprinkles is all she needs. Now, if you could get to Rainbowland right away, maybe, just maybe, you would be invited to Buddy Blue's surprise birthday party. Do you guys remember that Happy Birthday Rainbow Bright video where you're supposed to like play it at your birthday party and it had like the mascot style um, costume puppet things, Rainbow Bright? And uh, yeah, I watched that all the time as a kid. I watched it all the time. Back to our story. Such cute artwork. Bend and stretch. Bend and stretch. Jump. Two, three, four. Jump! Two, three, four, called Buddy Blue as he exercised with Patty O'Green. Come on, Buddy, moaned Patty. I'm tired already and we haven't even started to run. You have to warm up before you run, said Buddy. Patty O'Green, you promised to come with me. I will, I will, said Patty, remembering that it was her job to keep Buddy away from the color castle while it was being decorated for his surprise birthday party. So Patty and Buddy finished their warm-ups. Meanwhile, the Sprites and all the other color kids were working hard to get ready for Buddy's party. The Sprites were busy scrubbing the color castle from top to bottom. Twink, Rainbow Bright's favorite Sprite, ooh, favoritism, was hurrying them along. I like that, 10,000 balloons. That's funny. This is a subtle joke, I don't know, I'm amused. The color kids were filling the castle with star decorations and balloons of every color. You'd better be careful, Red Butler, said Rainbow Bright. I don't think you should blow that balloon up much more. 
at her face when checking him out. Pop! It was too late. Everyone laughed at the look of surprise on Red Butler's face. Lala Orange ran to his side. Are you all right? She asked. Sure, said Red. Just get me another balloon. Damn. Freaking dominant, dude. Commanding. You tell him, Red Butler, get me that balloon. She's running to his side. This is like 90210. What happens between the lines in Rainbow Land, man? By now, Buddy Blue and Patio Green had started on their run around Rainbow Land, up to Red Region, down to Orange Meadows, through Yellow Plains, and straight into Green Grange. Patio Green was huffing and puffing. I think it's time to rest, she said breathlessly, sitting down on a bed of green clover. I'll just take a quick spin around Blue Zone, called Buddy over his shoulder. I'll be back to get you in no time. Blue Zone, sounds like a sonic level. As soon as Patio Green caught her breath, she began looking for a four-leaf clover. That would make a fine birthday present for Buddy, she said to herself. On a gray and gloomy hill just above Rainbow Land is a place called the Pits, where Murky Dismal and his helper Lurky live. Helper my eye, that's his man. Every day, Murky tries his hardest to make everyone as miserable as he is. Really great illustrations. I love all the vibrant colors. Ah, said Murky Dismal, looking over Lurky's shoulder as he mixed a brew in a great pot. Our doom potion is just about ready. Why don't we go try it out on one of those cheerful little color kids? Murky Dismal and Lurky packed up the potion and climbed into their grunge buggy. They headed toward Rainbow Land, straight toward the blue zone. I did it! I found one, shouted Patio Green, holding up a four-leaf clover. She started humming, happy birthday to you. Ooh, that must have been before Warner Brothers had the rights and then relinquished them. Public domain now, you know. But where is Buddy? She wondered. He was going to take a quick spin and then come back to get me. She knew there was only one thing that would stop him from coming back. Murky Dismal! I hope you're as lucky as you're supposed to be, said Patio Green to her four-leaf clover. And she ran as fast as she could back to the color castle. Why wouldn't she run to the blue zone? When she got there, she had to shout over the noise of the color kids and the sprites. Buddy Blue is in trouble, she said. He went jogging up toward the blue zone and never came back. Oh no, said Rainbow Bright. We've got to help him. You notice how Starlight's hair changes? Sometimes it starts with red and sometimes it starts with blue and there's no rhyme or reason when it switches. Just saying. Rainbow Bright ran outside and began to call for Starlight, her magical flying horse. He had been sent out to look for flowers for the party. Starlight was admiring himself in the reflection of a pond. But when he heard Rainbow's call, he took off immediately for the color castle. It's like that big moment. In a flash, he was at Rainbow's side. We've got to find Buddy Blue, she said. He's in trouble, quick Starlight. With Rainbow Bright on his back, Starlight flew over Rainbow Land toward the blue zone. It wasn't long before Rainbow and Starlight saw what they had feared. The grunge buggy with its gray cloud of doom was closing in on Buddy Blue. Murky Dismal had his evil potion ready. Starlight swept down close and Rainbow Bright cast out her magic color crystals. As soon as they hit the potion, a beautiful haze of color appeared. Oh no, cried Murky Dismal. Faster, Lurky, faster! But Rainbow Bright's star sprinkles were already working their magic on Lurky. Oh, should I do it in like the Lurky voice? Uh, what's the hurry? It's such a nice day for a buggy ride. There we go. Faster, you dimwit, yelled Murky. Don't let that kid get away! Ooh, that's, I like that drawing. But it was too late. Buddy Blue climbed onto Starlight's back behind Rainbow Bright. That was a close call, said Buddy. Let's get out of here. At the color castle, Patio Green was the first to see Rainbow, Starlight, and Buddy Blue coming. Hurry, she called. They're almost here. Everyone ran to hide. 
Gee, said Buddy when they landed. It's awfully quiet. Happy birthday, shouted all his friends as soon as Buddy opened the castle door. Twink came out carrying a star-shaped birthday cake. Buddy Blue made a birthday wish and blew out the candles. Thank you, everyone, he said. Patty O'Green handed Buddy the four-leaf clover. Here is a birthday present, Buddy. I think it brought you luck today. Picture symbolic. <laughs> Fan theory symbolism, being hugged by a rainbow. You know where we're going. Then Rainbow Bright took out a handful of star sprinkles she saved for special occasions. When she tossed them at Buddy, the air all around him lit up with every color of the rainbow. Happy birthday, Buddy Blue, said Rainbow Bright. And it was a birthday Buddy Blue would never forget. And on the back, we have a list of the other stories that were printed alongside this one. So this is a golden book specifically. And that's our story. You know, we could be annoying and comment on it. It's kind of like, I thought there'd be a twist. There was a lot of, there was a lot of literary writing room for a twist here because we had, we had Patio Green decide that Buddy Blue was in trouble based on nothing. Like just because he didn't get back fast enough, she figured he was in trouble. So I think a really good twist would have been for her to like run to the blue zone and she gets kidnapped by Murky or she gets attacked by Murky instead of, but then like Rainbow Bright had to ride Starlight. So she needed to go get Rainbow so Rainbow could do the thing, you know, monster of the day moment. Um, and that's, you know, and that's why she ran to Rainbow and decided that Buddy Blue was in trouble. But I think it would have been a very strong literary moment if we took that omniscient jump over to Buddy Blue to see if he was actually in trouble instead of Rainbow Bright discovering her worst nightmare. I don't know. I think it just would have been, uh, some good character building. <laughs> And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm Lauren Stone with PopLurker.com. Join us next week for another exciting fandom storybook hour when we will actually be reading a Rainbow Bright book from 2015. I know. I lost my mind when I found it too. All right, you guys. Be good. Be safe. Love what you love. Never stop lurking. I'll catch you for the next one. Bye.